Initially, I was going to make a combination of units and commanders video, but man, that list became long enough for an hour and a half long video, and I figured no one would want to see that and see me ramble for about an hour and a half. So instead, I decided to scrap that, even though it was pretty close to be done in terms of script. Uh, let's, uh, I would like to talk about instead just the commanders. And instead, I'm just going to be covering their popular picks to rank what type of commanders they are. And I'm going to mention what kind of units will go best with those. So this is, I should mention, is from the perspective of a competitive player for competitive play. These tiers are all about how likely you will see these commanders picked or banned in a competitive setting. And this completely changes when you're playing solo, when you're playing in teams. Uh, so keep that in mind. It can be, they might be in their current tier because they're very strong in the current meta, or they're just a very strong gen commander in general. This is certainly not the tier list for public games, as I just mentioned, because everything changes when you add a little bit of co coordination into the mix. Uh, S tier um, is something you will see in almost every competitive match and is a pick you just can't go wrong in the current meta. And yeah, that's basically what you should think of in terms of these tiers. These tiers are going to change in time as the commanders are changed, as the meta begins to change. So S tier is something you will probably see in almost every competitive match. It's a pick, just can't go wrong. A tier is at the hands of a player who can play them on the highest level, is almost as good as tier S, and in a lot of circumstances is better than tier S, but it needs specific knowledge or your team's plan to exploit that commander's advantage. It's just, uh, it might be because of its pick of units are not as good. They're basically a good equivalent to their alternative on their S tier counterpart, either in power or popularity, because that's also what we are ranking them by. B tier is more niche and more specialized stuff. These are the things you see if you see the enemy team picking a specific combination of units that you need to counter. Or you have a specific build that can really take advantage of the abilities of that commander or their unit. For example, if you're going for a rush uh, kind of setting, you might want to prefer commanders from this tier that have that ability. C tier is for two things. Uh, it's for commanders that have not yet been tested on a competitive level because we had quite a few commanders that did come out and it is still hard to tell how they're going to perform until we see them in a competitive setting, so it will take time and theory crafting to see where they will stand. So C is kind of a special tier that we just do not know yet, that we still cannot place. D tier is for commanders that simply do not have much of a point in the current meta and will most likely not see much competitive play. I would like to remind you that this is purely from my observation and my opinion from the current tournaments. This is mostly for unit and commander combinations that get outclassed by other factions uh, or just by other commanders. Instead, I'll be talking about commanders themselves and will mention what units that go with it, as mentioned before. So uh, we're going to be going pretty much randomly and we're going to start with the barbarian faction. And of course, we're going to start that with Arminius. The good old Arminius. On competitive level, his main advantage is his speed, which is considerable. And let him do very nice, this lets him do very nice back caps, hit skirmishers. But his lack of defensive abilities or strong offensive capabilities does make him a niche pick. You will still see him on competitive level, but perhaps not as much as others in this list. His Frenzy ability can be considered a quite a strong offensive ability, but it is not as strong as, say, Vengeance or at Portas. He's just not made for that. At the hands of a good player, this one can rise up to an A or S tier. Uh, this is It rises up from an A tier to an S tier, basically. But in general, this tends to be a situational pick, in my opinion, uh, for his cover, but to me, he is more between... 
A and B tiers, but then again, I'm not a Cavalry player, so I'm not the final authority on this one. Mostly because he gets, in my opinion, overshadowed by Scipio in terms of combat ability and ability to hold. But his damage ability, com his da damage capability combined with the speed makes him a popular choice among Cav players. So because of that, we are going to put him on A tier. Uh... I would say, as I said, A tier can oftentimes be S tier at the hands of a good player. So that really depends on what you have, what the enemy has, and if you do have a good Versingeter uh, Armenius player. Let's talk about Versingeterix. This is what the Barbarian faction needed when he first came out. Good defensive and offensive capabilities good inherent mobility because of his units and his ability to dislodge the enemy from their location and make him, him a great damage dealer with utility abilities. You can use him as cavalry, you can use him as infantry, he's a very solid pick and definitely A tier and we see him either being picked or considered for that exact reason. So let's move him to A tier. Boudicca. In competitive there are three classes of commanders, at least for now. Damage dealer, support, or ranged. Boudicca is the support option for the Barbarian faction with unique synergy with dogs. Dogs allow her to hunt undefended skirmishers, just like cavalry, which lets her play as two units in one. But dogs cannot apply flanking. So what they do instead is counter pikes and spears since the dogs do not take damage from phalanx or stakes. Rebellion, however, is what really makes her, makes her work. Uh, and this makes people going for rush. If you're going for a rush focus groups, you will often see her. This makes her an A tier pick for dogs and C tier for everything else. And just because she is so niche just for that specific combination i would like to put her in b tier which i do know this is going to be a little bit controversial but you know not everybody can be on the top and also that does not mean she's in any way worse if you're going for a rush build Boudicca is going to be a very strong pick for you next up let's talk about carthage in carthage we have only two commanders so that's going to be quick he's a great damage dealer pretty much the Carthage version of Germanicus in my opinion. He can be very annoying as elephants, especially when he pops at Portas, because, uh, well, he can deny healing points very effectively. And when he pops at Portas, and unlike Vengeance, you cannot just run away from him, just surrendering ground, that thing will stay a while for its full duration. The recent uh, nerf to Determination, however, Definitely knocked him down from S tier to A tier, but he's still a very solid pick for a damage dealer. Uh, as such, that's why I think he will be on A tier. In terms of um, as elephant or spears, I think he's very effective with swords. Uh, I'm not sure. I do prefer. I've seen him being more picked for spears. So, Hasdrubal. This commander is the one that I moved around the most. Where's our Hasdrubal? Where's that pretty boy? There he is. I've moved him a lot from C tier to B tier to A tier. It's It really depends. I move around him the most, but I've asked my cavalry players and they all agree that Hasdrubal cavalry is actually one of the best. The spears are good, but I do not see them beating Leonidas with those things considered... With those things considered, the common consensus is that Hasdrubal is an A-tier commander with the ability to disable a lot of melee units for a long time with sight defection and long-range healing. He is a very viable choice with his units. I heard that he only uses charges to very specific units. So I want to pick him between something B or A. So because just because of that cavalry factor, I am going to put him on A-tier but we will probably revisit this one. He is like B plus in his. He is in his own league. But that's basically where he is at. When it comes to Greeks, uh, let's talk about Kanane. 
Kanane is a tough one. Kanane is arguably the best range commander in terms of dishing out DPS, but sadly the current meta really does not favor this playstyle very much. The current meta that we have seen so far has been all about the pushing power rather than the area denial that ranged oftentimes inflict. The short, relatively short respawn, respawn times and ability to heal units uh, really turned her from an S tier, uh, who people call, used to call nerfs for, to I would say B tier as a counterpick to range uh, in kind of, with MBRX in that regard. Speaking of which, I believe we have forgot about MBRX in our uh, Barbarians. MBRX used to be the X overpowered commander who always was called for nerfs, and I always called him he is not really as strong as most people make him out to be. His ultimate may allow him to have the highest range, but the forced high arcs allows any good range players to dodge him very easily. But with that said, the base damage that, that his archers have, and haste being a quasi-barrage, does make him a very viable counterpick as to crossbows or the repeater, repeater crossbows. Because of that factor, I feel like Ambiorix is an A-tier counterpick. Oftentimes, it's qu quite oftentimes interchanged based on what players are comfortable with. But when I see Ambiorix being picked, I can always say, okay, he is a counterpick to that range and he is there to provide that strong area denial because of his units. I think MBRX gets a, well, Kanane is a little bit inferior, but you can see both of these being used interchangeably. These are both, I would say, in like a B, I'd say they're both B tier because they are specifically picked to counter the Chinese repeater crossbows. You will not really see these being picked on their own, except on tier 7. That's because the Barbarian Archer is really strong on tier 7. So for now, let's put them. Uh, let's put him on Bravo simply because of their role as counter picks to more range focused builds. So let's go back to Greeks and talk about Leonidas. Leo has always been a solid commander. Main spears and pike commander at times made his 300 counterpart blush. At the hands of a solid player, it is a really tough battle, even if you think you can counter him. He's a good buffer, but also a very good damage dealer. He is perhaps the most versatile since his fight in the shade counters skirmishers and his shield bash counters melee, including dogs. But, unfortunately, not both. You will need some combined tactics to beat a world-class Leonidas. In most maps, he is S-tier, but his lack of mobility hampers him a bit, which is why you will usually see him in the defender role most of the time. So let's take our uh, Leo and put him on S tier. Okay, next up we have Milty 80s. Good old Milty. In the old version, Milty was a very solid pick, which uh, with, with his ability to counter archers thanks to his brain cr break ranks and give them chase almost as good as cavalry I will argue with Spears he's even better than some cavalry, but also being able to protect his own range made him a great pick. Sadly, these days meta is more about heavy infantry with lots of holding power, which is unfortunately what Milty lacks, and that's exactly what counters him. So you will rarely see him with his past glories, which is why I would give him C, but in the current meta, he is really a D tier, but if the meta shifts just a little and if we see more range being played, he can be he can have a much greater potential. So because of that, he is going to be our first D pick. Simply because in competitive, you just will not be able to get that space to get that multi 80s in. So let's talk about the famous Alexander. That's a commander I have not seen in a long time. You can see him running around in public games, but in competitive, 
Outside of his charging ability, he is just not very good. He is one of the commanders that I've not played much because he's a cavalry commander. And cavalry has always been something I stood away from in Total War Arena. That's because in normal Total Wars, cavalry for me tends to be not what wins battles. Yes, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, cavalry so OP. My strats have always revolved around heavy, heavy infantry and skirmishers. But anyway, uh, let's talk about what, why he is not very good and why we don't see him very often. Um, you see, cycle charging, which is his main ability, just charging in, pulling out, and coming back in, is just not very good against good players. And it's just nigh impossible and will wipe out your unit. At the very least, it will do more damage to you than it will be to your target. A good player will turn their units before your charge connects, reducing the damage, and if that unit was something heavy, he can straight up reduce that damage to something very negligible, such as Sulla. He's not as fast as Arminius and cannot hold position or contest much. He will melt very quickly because those cavalry, the Greek cavalry, is more shock cavalry. And as such, I have just not seen him picked competitively, um, I'm sure I might be wrong on this one, but um, as I said, Cavalry is not really something that I've played a lot. So sadly to me, uh, Alexander will have to be D tier along with Meltiades. Let's see, where's our Alexander? Right here with D tier. And so I think this is a good place to stop for this week. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, next week, we are going to be discussing the Roman commanders and the Chinese commanders and placing them appropriately into the tier list. What do you think? Do you agree with these or would you move some of them around? Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time.